welcome to Willingdon Community Schools BBC News Report. I'm Tom. And I'm Millie. The headlines today. First flight through Brisbane, Libya crisis continues. Tsunami engulfed Japan's east coast. Budget changes, Hawassa help, and two soldiers die in explosion. Gaddafi strikes again. In Misrata, a rebel-held city east of the capital, Tripoli, government tanks have been bombing the area close to a nearby hospital. There have also been reports on ferocious fighting between rebels and the forces of General Gaddafi in Ajibai. Residents flee in the town to describe heavy-duty bombing, gunfire and houses ablaze. In Misrata, Libya's third largest city, witnesses said that tanks have pulled back from their positions because of air assaults from international forces. Mass destruction in Libya caused by Colonel Gaddafi. Explosions have now been going on for six days. This is a terrible tragedy for all the people in Libya and the Middle East. Also, anti-Gaddafi rebels found a captured tank in the middle of the Libyan desert. And the international defences are sending in Tornado GR4s and Typhoon F2s for their speed and ability to defend themselves from enemies. Thank you, and now back to the studio. Tsunami engulfs Japan's east coast. Breaking news. Japan has raised the alert level at Fukushima's nuclear plant from 4 to 5 on a 7 point international danger scale from atomic accidents. The move places the disaster at the Fukushima Daiichi site two levels between Ukraine's Chernobyl 1986 disaster. Engineers have resumed work after seeing smoke, a plume of black smoke on Wednesday to restore the cooling system of Reactor 3 at Japan's stricken Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The crisis was triggered by last week's 8.9 magnitude quake and tsunami. The Japanese nuclear agency's decision to raise the alert level to five classifies the Fukushima situation as an accident with wider consequences. It also places the crisis on the same level with Three Mile Island nuclear accident in the US in 1979. The official death toll from the quake Subsequent tsunami has now risen to 9,523. Another 6,094 people are listed as missing. In further news, floods swept through Brisbane. A couple of months ago, terrible rains soaked Brisbane and the area surrounding it, causing the banks of the river Brisbane to burst and flood the nearby streets and houses. A few weeks after the incident, a cyclone hit the area of Brisbane, adding to the damage that was already present. Paul Dunn from Brisbane said, Our house was not directly hit by the flood, but where I work was hit. We had over 50 people who could not get to the office for about four to five days. Australia's third largest city, Brisbane, has begun to clean up mud and debris in some areas as flood waters begin to disappear. As levels fall, citizens are starting to see all the damage. At least 30,000 properties in the city have been swamped. Floods have surged through Queensland since January killing at least 19 people and displacing thousands more. While waters have gone in the city centre, residents have had to clean dirty mud up their houses. Officials have said the clean-up could take months. And now on to our next story. Budget changes cost dramatically. George Osborne has, postpo has postponed a 5p race rise in fuel costs, which is due to start next month. He was introduced a fuel st stabiliser to keep full pumps down. Mr Osborne is going to cut the top up payments in the winter. This means the pensioners are going to lose out. The top up payments help them to pay the bills. When they go up in payment, payments to people over 80 will go down from £400 to £300. And for over 60s, they will go down £50 to make it £200. So this shows just how much the country's budget is going to change during the next three months. In entertainment news, the Hollywood actress, Elizabeth Taylor, died yesterday at the age of 79. During her lifetime, she had eight marriages and she was in many films. Some of these films are extremely famous, like Cleopatra. She was known as the Queen of Hollywood and will be missed very much as she had such an exciting life. Now for the school and local news. This week is the National Climate Week. We're fighting against global warming. National Climate Week is a national occasion which provides a yearly renewal to challenge climate change. It is a group of people wanting to do their bit to protect our planet and create a firm future. National Climate Week has shined light on the many positive steps already being taken in workplaces and communities across Britain. 
The power of these practical, practical are inspiring millions small groups. Thousands of businesses, charities, schools, councils and other, others are running events during Climate Week this week. All of the campaigns seek to engage in different ways and are measuring success differently. They will show more what can be achieved, share ideas and encourage thousands more to act during the rest of the year. Thanks Tom. This evening in East Sussex around 6 o'clock there will still be sunshine with some light cloud. The maximum temperature will be 11 degrees and a minimum temperature of 5 degrees. Throughout the night temperatures will stay well above freezing. At 3am there will be some foggy patches over the south coast. Tomorrow will be sunny for most of the day again with temperatures above 10 degrees. As we move into tomorrow evening, some white clouds will cover most parts of the south coast with some sunny spells. Tomorrow night will be quite cloudy with, and temperatures will be around 7 degrees. So the next couple of days will be nice and warm with, the, with temperatures reaching 12 degrees at times. Thank you. Thank you, Louis. You have been watching Wind and Community Schools BBC School Report by 811. Thanks for watching and have a good evening. Mm -hmm.